Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're jumping right into a haul. This is a haul from a recent thrifting trip that I took you guys along with me. We were in Thorndale, Pennsylvania. That was probably two videos ago, last video, something like that. And on the table before me, I have the items that I picked up. Now I did not do any research, so some of this stuff I'm gonna know nothing about. And some of it, you guys were great enough to leave comments in that video of what I had picked up. You know me, I normally source by eye a lot and then do the research which somehow works out really well all right hit that like and subscribe button let's get right into the haul so the first two items that I want to talk about are these ornate gold framed painted pictures so this is what they look like I absolutely fell in love with these first sight. They came out in a bin that an employee just looked at me and said, help yourself to digging. You gotta love an employee like that. So I just dug through that bin and I saw a small part of the frame at the bottom of the bin. And I was like, oh yeah, I want those. So these are what they're like. You can see that the print of the picture or the picture itself is very small, the painting. And the thing I can't figure out with these is if this is an original painting. A couple of you left a comment that it's most likely original. They were made a lot and it's just an artist who is able to do this very quickly. But the quality of these are just outstanding. So I picked up both of these, $3.99 a piece. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put these on for. I do have to check comps for something like this, but I'm imagining probably at least $75 for the two. So that is the first item. Hope the sunshine's not killing the shot. We got a ton of snow this morning, a ton meaning five to eight inches, and I'm about to head out to Florida tomorrow morning. So just in the nick of time. I guess the nick of time would have been before the snow came, but it's pretty to see the snow and then go down and swim in Florida. So this is item number one. All right, let's go right into item number two. So the second item is one set up and they are new in package. These are sheets, ultra soft sateen, 100% Pima cotton, 525 thread count. That's a nice thread count. I got the fitted and the flat and it has a T above it. I would imagine that means tall, maybe like a longer sheet. Not sure about that. And I actually had Lisa make a, a cheat sheet because we pulled the stickers off of them. And these were Wamsetta, $3.99 each I paid. Again, I have to check comps. I'm imagining at least $30. I could be wrong about that, but Wamsetta is a nice name. You do want to run a comp when you find Wamsetta. The next item is an item that I pick up quite often, a backpack. I sell a ton of backpacks, like I always say. This is Microsoft. So there is the labeling there. As you can see, it's a reflective. So this is great for bikers, cyclists. And I paid, what did I pay for this? Let me see if it's on the list. Hmm. I don't think this one was one of the ones that we had to de-sticker, but I believe I paid $4 for it. So that is that item. I love backpacks and almost always I do run comps on them. This time I don't know that I did or not. But if it's a backpack in a good name, like even L.L. Bean, something like that, an outdoor brand, I go ahead and pick them up. I also picked up a shoulder bag recently and that was to me. That was really great to find that one. But okay, so backpacks. You do want to run comps, you want to look that they're well built, that it's not a really cheaply made item, but like I said, most times I'm running comps on them. I'm going to guess off the top of my head, probably 35 for this, 30 to 35 let's say. Here are some coasters I fell in love with. Now a couple of you commented in the whole video that these are a craft project that's popular. So what a great project. Hopefully my hand is stopping the sun. Maybe the sunshine is better. Maybe I should close the curtains because the snow is just bouncing that sunlight off. So I did get a set of four and I just love these. Absolutely love these. And what did I pay for these? I paid pink coasters, 99 cents each, $4 for the four. Just beautiful. Here was a mask that I picked up and you guys, I'm gonna put the name on the screen, the name of this. That quite a few of you did guess at the mask. And Lisa came into my office when she was working here the other day and had it in front of her face. And I was just listing, typing away, and I looked up and there she was. So that made me laugh after I jumped, but um, 
very cool I picked it up because the elastic is quite old that's what I judged this by it's in very good shape these might be common but when I see something like this sitting on a store shelf a thrift store shelf I almost always will pick this up so absolutely yes to beautiful Asian masks that I had no idea what this will bring I know a few of you have been waiting for me to list this adorable cat this is Christopher LaMontagne from Connecticut I did recognize it fairly quickly but the thing that I goofed up about the thing that I was wrong about was that I um, just assumed it was one of the carved pieces I didn't really pay attention to the bottom this is a poured cast from the original so the original is made and then a mold is made and then they pour cast it probably like a like a resin or a I'm going to say like a ceramic resin this is what it looks like on the back it is signed and it's funny because the bottom looks like it is hand signed this does not look like a stamp or something that's mechanically put on Christopher La Montaigne 1992 this is number 76 of 2000 so right there I should have caught on how could this be hand carved if there are 2000 that would be a lot of work for Christopher but just beautiful look at that face and I was thrilled to pick him up and what did I pay for him a dollar 99 again I'm not sure what I'm going to put him on for I'm going to say probably 30 to 35 if not more I have to think about this for a while but um, anytime I see a figurine or a statue like this especially if it's signed on the bottom in the cart it goes really fast so cats are good sellers staying with the cat theme I was thrifting with Roger and he held this up and what like this and I was like yes give that to me adorable this is um a leather cat with bells on it I'm not sure exactly what this would be used for maybe a doorknob but this is kind of small for a doorknob a key ring what else could this be used for just a decoration I guess anything that you would need a ring for and I guess it could be a key ring that's quite big for a key ring now it could be even a Christmas decoration I really like this and the cat I paid $1.99 Lisa called it doorbell she wrote the list for me so very fun jingle bells all right the next thing we're going to take a look at are two tennis rackets again have I sold a ton of tennis rackets and I think I've played tennis three times in my whole life when I say played tennis I mean I just tried to hit the ball <laughs> And these are Wilson now when I look at tennis rackets because I don't have a lot of knowledge I look for graphite I look for a lot of markings and good branding I look that these strings is that even what it's called the tennis strings the net are well placed and that they seem sturdy they're not falling apart most rackets I don't think players want to have to have them restrung and I do look for this banding to be symmetrical and strong see that I don't even know what these things are called so how do I sell hundreds of rackets if I'm not an expert if I don't have information I just comp it that's all I do guys I see a racket I use the small amount of judgment I have again you see these stickers it has all the information right here so I just copy that into my title so I look at the title of it up here it looks like it says Wilson iCode could be wrong about that mid plus pro overgrip and then it gives all the numbers so I try to make sure that the title of the listing has the grip in it the size of the head and any other pertinent information and then I just run a comp and I list it that way tennis rackets are very easy to list in my opinion because everything is right there I often talk about every item in the whole world should have to be marked on the bottom what it is and tennis rackets almost always work that way now if I see a tennis racket it seems really inexpensive there's not a lot of information I run a quick comp but most times I leave it behind and sometimes I make a big mistake or a fairly good mistake recently probably a couple of months ago I comped one too quick I listed it and I kid you not within two minutes that thing sold I think I sold it for 35 and uh, when I recomped it because when something sells that fast you know you probably gave it away and I saw that I could have gotten about 120 for it so I did send it out I didn't cancel the sale I sent it out and I just said to the buyer congratulations on a great deal so I let him know that I knew that it was worth more and I was sending it on anyway and he left me great feedback so that was good all right so tennis rackets always comp tennis rackets golf clubs 
uh, baseball bats, and any kind of sporting equipment that looks well made. I am not sporty, I'm not an athletic, I have very little experience with items that I make thousands of dollars off of. So might not be your cup of tea, but for me, making money is always the main priority. Next item up is a huge vase, well not huge, fairly large. This is what it looks like. Just beautiful. And right now the sun is streaming through. So pretty. So, so pretty. Now the thing with this vase is when I saw it on the shelf, I knew I'd be taking it and I was so excited. I did miss a flaw with this. This vase is not painted and it's not separate pieces of glass leaded together. This is actually has like a transfer on it. And then the borders are overlaid with some sort of material. But as you can see, it is missing a little bit of its, I'm going to call it its overlay. Can you guys see that? It's kind of clear. And if I had seen that, I don't know, I probably would have left it behind because it is a big piece of glass and it's going to take extra care. So if I saw that flaw, I'd probably leave it behind. Now what do I do when I bring something home that has a flaw? I judge the flaw. I judge the whole thing based on the flaw. So if something has a severe flaw and the value of the item is not that high, I try to get rid of it very quickly and sell it for what I bought it for, plus all my fees and everything. So I try to cut even. Very few times do I throw something out, although I do once in a while, or very few times do I donate back. So I try to recoup the cost as quickly as possible. But with something like this, this still has a lot of value, still beautiful, and um, I don't know, kind of on the fence of whether I would have picked it up. But at this point in the game, with this much work going on, I probably would have left it behind. But it's still good, still beautiful, stained glass, large vase. So while I was going down one of the aisles, I noticed these mugs. This is Pioneer Woman on a mug tree. Mug tree is like a little tree that hangs your mugs on it. I'm sure we all know what it is. And in that video, quite a few of you said that I missed picking up the mug tree. And let me just say that I judge every item separately. So I counted the mugs as, a, as an item and the tree as an item. Because here's what happens. When you pick up a heavy item, these are quite heavy. And by the time you pack these enough to ensure that they're going to make it to the buyer, hopefully in one piece, to have a mug tree in the same box would throw the box into oversized dimensions and kill the sale. I know that's probably a hard concept to understand of like, why would I separate the tree from the mugs? I think the value is in the mugs. And would it have been nice to have the tree with the mugs? Yes. Could I sell the tree by itself? I could have. But to put the mugs and the tree in one box as one listing, the box is going to be over 12 by 12 by 12, and the mugs are going to throw it into a priority weight. So when you put those things together, you're going to have to sell that item for a great amount of money to warrant the work, and that the shipping is going to be super high. I hope all of that makes sense. I know I probably didn't explain that clearly, but in the blink of an eye, I am making that decision as I pick things up because in the past, I have made those mistakes. It's not like I knew all of this. So when I'm looking at an item, I'm not only looking at if it's an item that's going to sell through quickly or something that's very, you know, good profit. I'm also considering the shipping. I do that with every item. That's one of the first things my mind asks is, what is the shipping condition for this item? So for the mugs, I really liked these. I think they're gonna do well. I'm imagining, I don't think I have these listed yet. I'm imagining probably $75 for the four. And if I would have thrown the tree into it, I'd want another 20, so 95, and then the buyer would be paying that extra shipping. See what I'm saying? So um, yes to Pioneer Woman mugs, gorgeous condition, beautiful. That that is a big old cup of coffee, kind of like my size cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> Pioneer Woman mugs, you want to look them up. Okay, so I did not run a comp at this at all. I bought this because I think it's beautiful. So how's that for honesty? And what did I pay for this? $4. So see, see the point there is that for $4, you're not going to lose on something like this because of how it's marked on the bottom. So this is Ainsley Wild Tudor. So it's giving you the name. Love that. Fine Bone China made in England. 
So having that kind of provenance, I'll call it, which is probably the wrong term, I know that my $4 investment is absolutely protected and I'm thinking probably $25 for this, just a guess. But this is just a beautiful vase. I don't think it's going to blow through the store, but I think this is going to do well. Beautiful. This next item was sitting on the shelf. <laughs> it's a little dusty from the Oasis that I pulled out of the middle of it. I love everything about this. I love the style of painting. I love the size of it. It's great for like utensils in the kitchen or for paint brushes in the art room. It would be good for tools on a desk and also for um, flowers or something like that. This is BBP, which is Beaumont Brothers Pottery. I think they're out of Ohio, don't quote me on that. And while these don't bring a lot of money, I really like their items. It has a very country farmhouse look, which I don't care who says what, I think it's still a thing because when I put farmhouse in my title, it still gets more views than when I don't. So I very much like this type of croc style. Do I have a lot of it in my house? No, I don't, but I'm very attracted to it and I really think it's beautifully painted. So a lot of these only bring 20 to $25 if that, I'm going to price this one a little bit higher and see what happens. I'm going to try for 35 to 40. Will I get that? I probably won't, but it doesn't hurt to try. Many of my items, when I have an item that's just a mediocre price range, sometimes I think if all the stars align and I think I have a good one, I will push the envelope and try to get a little bit more money. And then after like a month, if it doesn't sell, then I'll consider lowering it. But just beautiful Beaumont Brothers Pottery BBP. All right, here's an item that you guys are probably going to be proud of me for picking up, but my mind says, why did I pick these up? Clear glass. So I got three of these. It's like a long cylinder. I'm going to call these a vase because the mouth part, if it was a glass, is too flat and too sharp. Now it's not sharp like the glass is gonna cut you, but I don't think this is a proper opening for drinking. So I'm thinking it's a vase and could be a bud vase, I'd say. The thing I liked about it is the weight is very good, the glass is very clear, and there is one controlled bubble in a, in a thick base. So that is what that looks like. Hopefully the camera picks that up. And I really liked these. I paid 99 cents for them. Probably sell the three together as a set. I thought somebody would like, you know, three on a shelf or whatever. And there is a slight flaw on one of them. Now, if this was a drinking glass, I would not sell it that way. I would, I would have to damage this out. But because it's a vase, and I think I'm pretty sure it's a vase, because it has this little slight chip here, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, um, I'll go ahead and sell it anyway and just disclose it in my listing. Last item up is a juicer with a pour spout, La Crusade. <laughs> and beautiful color. Now it's not marked France. I know the cookware or the casseroles, the cassoulet pots usually have a made in France. I don't see it on this, which doesn't mean it's fake, but to be truthful, this is gonna take me a while to see if this is a fake or a real, pretty sure it's a real one. But again, this isn't a high dollar, but the color is good, the style is good, the use is good, and the name is really good. All right, guys, so that is the haul for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Hit that like and subscribe, and as always, go out and get what's yours.